you for coming out to join me today for the kickoff for Healthy City Days. I want you all to give a big thank you, a big Baltimore City Hall thank you to Senator Ben Cardin and Congressman John Sarbanes for being with us today. They are great friends to Baltimore City and they stand up for Baltimore. I'm also glad to be joined today by, I'm about to make you a congresswoman as well, council, <laughs> I wouldn't do that John, I wouldn't do that, that is your district, <laughs> by councilwoman Ricky Spector who is also the dean of the council. And my new health commissioner is here, Dr. Axiris Barbeau. Thank you so much for being here. I think, Maria, you're going to be introduced later, but our, our representative who's working so hard with us from Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Maria Tillman. Thank you so much. So I'm proud to stand with you today to help make Baltimore a healthier city. Healthy City Days is a new initiative with a week filled with fun. We'll have free activities that will remind us all what we can do to make ourselves and our family and our city healthier. How many of you, and I know that there are a few of you in here, how many of you spend your lunchtime hour walking? Anyone? See, I know there was a few of you, yes. So getting up from your desk, and this is something that I do, getting up from your desk is taking, and taking a walk is a, free and, uh, is a free exercise that you can do, and over time it will make a big difference. And don't forget about the things that you can do even while you are sitting at your desk. I got so desperate to try to squeeze in some exercise time, I went online and found out all these things that you can do just sitting at your desk. So there, are, you don't have to, there, we're getting rid of all of the excuses to doing just a little thing. This week we are promoting the small changes we can do in our daily lives to make ourselves healthier. Baltimore's health statistics need to change. Too many in our city are living with and dying from chronic diseases that could have been prevented. In some of our communities, the life expectancy is barely over 60 years old. We need to begin to rethink the way we live. I hope that you take the time this week to think about how you live, how you eat, how much you exercise, and if you know uh, your health numbers, you know, your blood pressure, your sugar, your, you know, your diabetes, if, you, if you're at risk for diabetes, all of those things. So during Healthy City Days, you can attend a health fair. What I need is a cooking demonstration, so I'll probably see you at that one, as well as free screenings and hospital seminars. Tomorrow, I hope you meet me at the harbor at 11.30 to take part in a workout with one of Baltimore's finest who brought us a win last night, Ray Rice. <laughs> Healthy City Days events are, um, are on the calendars that we've distributed today. At the end of this week, I hope you have been able, you'll be able to say that you've educated yourself so that we can be healthier. Share the message with the ones that you love. If you're not in the best shape, it may seem impossible, but I promise you that by starting small, you can make meaningful steps to get on the road to a healthier life. So today we're fortunate to have a group of people from Baltimore Healthcare Access. Where are you, Baltimore Healthcare Access? Make some noise. Now this should inspire you. They decided to get serious about their health. Together, they got moving, and as a group, they have lost a total of 897 pounds. My, for my team that is here from my office, I sound like, it sounds like a challenge to us, right? We can be, there we go, there we go, there we go, we can top that. So that change is gonna make a big difference inside and out. So change isn't easy, not for an individual and not for a city, but it can be done. We just have to know that we can't do it alone. You need partners and you need support. So I look around and I see all of our partners are with us today. The people who are going to make our home, our city, a better place to live. I want to introduce one of those partners who knows what it means to live a healthy lifestyle, who knows what it means to be a strong advocate for the health and the well-being of all of us here in Baltimore City. 
our senator, Senator Ben Cardin. Well, first, thank you, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, for your leadership. You lead by example, and we thank you very much. Each of us can do something to be more active in our lives and can take responsibility for ourselves to lead a healthier life. It's the activities that we participate, it's the food that we eat, each one of us. It's getting the information so we know what to do. The mayor going online to figure out how she can use her time more effectively to keep herself healthy, to keep our city healthy. Each one of us can do more. And I want to thank our partners. I want to thank Care First. I want to thank all the partners that helped make it possible for Baltimore City to make a difference. For Baltimore City to make a difference. We can't do it alone. We need the partners. I'm really encouraged. I think under our mayor's leadership, we're going to make a difference in the health of the people of Baltimore. But let me tell you the challenges we have. You look at neighborhoods, and the mayor stated, mayor, mayor stated that you have life expectancies that are much different. In America, the life expectancy for an African American is five years, more than five years shorter than the rest of the population. You look at the incidence of diabetes or heart disease among race, and we have major issues in this country. So you have a right to expect the tools will be made available. And Congressman Sarbanes and the rest of our congressional team have done something about that. We've done something about it. In the health bill that was enacted, I'm proud of our efforts to elevate <laughs> primary care and wellness programs to make it easier for you to get coverage, to keep yourself healthy, to have your annual physicals, to do the to preventive health care. We also elevated the National Center for Minority Health and Disparities to an institute under NIH for minority health and disparities. We want to bring it all together in this country. But it starts with you, the efforts each one of us makes. Each one of us can make a difference. It's not just our lives, it's our family's lives. It's our community. You should do it for yourself, but if not, do it for your family and do it for our community. One of the great leaders on the health care debate, one of the great leaders to get the health care bill enacted so America joins every other industrial nation in the world that says health care is a right, not a privilege, is the congressman that represents you in Baltimore. That is Congressman John Sarbay. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. First of all, I want to, as others have done, I want to congratulate Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake on taking the initiative to get folks thinking here about how you stay healthy. Senator Cardin, who's been such a leader on health matters from the time that he entered public service, and certainly as we were pushing to get the health care bill through, mentioned this turn towards prevention and primary care that we're trying to make with our health care system. For too long, we've been focused on getting people better after they already get sick, which costs a lot of money for our health care system. It's also not particularly good for the patient. If you focus on keeping people healthy on the front end, that's better for everybody. It costs less money, and it makes for a healthier and happier population. It also means that the individual can be a full partner in their care. If you wait until you have to get a surgery, you can't help your surgeon perform that surgery. But if it's about staying healthy on the front end, eating right, managing a condition that you might have in a smarter way, you can be a full partner in your own care. So when you think about it that way, it means we're enlisting ourselves in promoting our health care, not just relying on somebody else. And the way it starts is to bring people together and have a focus. And that's what the mayor has done, and I congratulate her for her efforts, not just in this arena, but generally across the board. There's, a, there's an energy in the city now, and you can see it behind this uh, particular effort. So, Madam Mayor, congratulations uh, on this effort. I think the young people are the key, because if they take up this charge, they'll be the leaders in this effort, and we'll be following behind them. They're the ones that are going to make the difference. So I want to thank the dancers for an incredible performance today. Um, and I did just want to mention, I'm the author of something called the No Child Left Inside Act, which is to get young people 
outdoors as part of their education so they become more aware of the environment so that they learn better and obviously so that they can be healthier. And I don't see any reason going forward why Baltimore can't have a, as its goal to be the healthiest city in America. We can do that. Let's do that. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. We have another partner who really is focused on prevention as well. We have Maria Tilden from Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield who's going to tell you a little bit about their new Healthy Blue. But Care First, focused on prevention, our friend in this fight. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here, but I, I can't tell you how proud everyone in this room should be that we have um, such significant and powerful support be behind what is a critical issue that faces not just this, this our city, but our nation. I, the notion that we would today have our senator, congressman, and our mayor standing before you encouraging you to get out, get active, and make it a part of your day-to-day -day activities is critical. As a not-for-profit insurer here in the state of Maryland and uh, Northern Virginia and D.C., we are so proud to be a partner here. And um, it's our natural uh, proclivity to support initiatives that encourage folks to get healthy and stay healthy and not have to be faced with conditions that require uh, additional support, additional care. Um, you see many people around, uh, around the room who not only have on Healthy City Day shirts, but we actually have a new product called Healthy Blue. And it is all about incentives, all about encouraging uh, citizens, members to take that extra step and take care of their health and actually pay them for ensuring that, um, that they stay healthy and they manage their conditions. Um, so there are several reasons that uh, I'm very excited about Healthy City Days. And one of the main reasons is because it's my job as health commissioner to make sure that the health department does everything that it can to engage our citizens in various activities that highlight the importance of preventive care services and give concrete examples of how we can incorporate healthy lifestyle choices into every day. So Healthy City Days is such an event. It gives us an opportunity to demonstrate how good nutrition, regular exercise, and preventive health care screenings can help people lead healthier, longer lives and embrace overall wellness as a goal. Some of you may remember that at the kickoff, kickoff event earlier this month, I mentioned that while health has improved overall for all of Baltimore over the past decade, significant disparities remain between different groups, as was mentioned earlier. Um, and also, as was mentioned earlier, we still have a significant gap in life expectancy between certain neighborhoods in Baltimore, 20 years in fact, and there's a lot that can be done in that span. Heart disease is the number one cause of death for Baltimoreans. Much of it is due to the growing obesity epidemic. In 2007, one in three Baltimore adults were obese and another third were reported to be overweight. Said differently, only about a third of Baltimoreans are at a weight that we would consider to be healthy. 37% of Baltimore public high school students are overweight or at risk compared to 29% of their counterparts in Maryland and the U.S. Initiatives like Healthy City Days also remind us of the importance of checkups, regular checkups. The health department is leading by example. Next week, we will debut a health and wellness program for our employees. And the staff have been really working diligently uh, unbeknownst to me for a couple of weeks and they're pushing me to make a public statement that we are challenging okay. this is a public throwdown we're challenging other agencies other city agencies to join us in this effort um, <laughs> so I am standing between you and a walk but before I do that um, I want to remind everyone that if you need help getting health insurance, we want to make sure that we give you the phone number to call, which is 410-649-0500.